So we are in a bush tracker. This is a family quad bunk bush tracker. This particular family um, has bought second hand. They are about to travel around Australia and they actually had a uh, different van. It was an Explorex, but then unfortunately, because their eldest boy is getting a little bit big, it was a little bit small for them. So they found this particular van. Now we're going to do an upgrade in their Explorer X as well, but this van just suited them a little bit more. So it is a little bit of an older van. It's about 10 years old. Um, and these guys have gone about doing some really nice upgrades. They've replaced the fridge. It did have a three-way fridge in it. It's now got a compressor. They've replaced the old air conditioner with a Dometic press jet, which as if you've watched our videos before where very impressed with the efficiency of that particular air conditioner. It's, it's great from an electrical efficiency and it also does a little bit of a better job cooling wise as well. So overall just a better air conditioner than lots of others that are on the market. Really good for the amount of space it takes up on the roof and also the efficiency when running on batteries is, is excellent. So these bush trackers generally have the power system's up front in the front tunnel. So this van, because it is quite a high-end caravan, actually came with quite a substantial battery system, but being as old as it is, was quite old. So it actually had one of the original Enerdrive white box batteries in it, in it with an 1800 watt Xantrex um, inverter. And that, and that was hardwired through the van to all of the outlets in the van it didn't allow for the air conditioner and it didn't allow for the hot water system so it also had its own it had i think four 150 watt solar panels on the roof dc dc charger 240 volt charger so so quite a quite a well fitted out van to start off with as a baseline but what these guys were finding is that they were running out of battery so they just needed more energy available to them when they're off grid so more solar more battery bigger inverter because obviously they would like to be able to run a lot more equipment 1800 watts really only gives you the option of running maybe one appliance depending upon the size of the appliance. So what we did is we had a conversation around um, choosing between Victron and Enerdrive for the equipment that we were putting in the van. And I suppose from a technical perspective, what I try and do is get an understanding of how the system is going to be used. There's some benefits to using inverter chargers, uh, transformer based inverter chargers, such as Victron MultiPluses or the larger Enerdrive combis, so the E-Pro combis, they just give you a little bit more surge capacity in terms of being able to run multiple things at the same time and overloading the system a little bit. They can do that for short periods of time. The downside is that they generate a lot more heat. So I'm not a massive fan of putting those particular inverters in a really small space underneath a seat too much because it it does limit the capacity of the inverter by virtue of getting too hot. So if we're gonna install those types of systems, we will generally install them in areas where there's quite a lot of space. And in this particular van, as you've already seen, this has a significant amount of space in this front boot, uh, front tunnel, um, so that the heating and cooling capacity, the cooling capacity of the inverter itself is taken care of by virtue of being quite a lot of space in there. So, and just have a quick look. So as you can see, the, this is the front tunnel, so available space from the side. There, there will be a, um, a barrier board installed prior to the customer picking up. But 
there's a, you know, the inverters mounted vertically, which is the best option, the best option of cooling using um, convection cooling as well as the internal fan in the inverter itself. With this particular install as well, because which, these guys are actually going to be traveling around Australia, they're going to be living in the van, so they've sold their house and they're going to be actually living in this particular van. We need, we wanted to give them as much space as possible. So what we've gone and done is we've spoken with LifeTech about the battery and we probably hurried the design of a slimline large battery along a little bit. So this is one of the first 620 slims to be installed in a caravan. It has all the same features as all the other RV LifeTech and van life batteries and 300 amp BMS and fully sealed um, battery enclosure with the option to add a vent to take the um, vent outside which complies to ACE 3001. So we've done all of that. What we've also done is we've put the new Victron Orion, Orion XS in, so the 50 amp DC DC charger. We've installed 1400 watts of solar on the roof, so seven 200 watt panels. And that's that's generating 80, 80 plus amps or, you know, in, in good clear sun, you're getting plus 1200 watts of, of recharge out of the flat mounted solar panels on the roof. Yeah, and so um, Jen's just asked about how long we've been running the air conditioner for since we've started testing this van, which was four days ago um, since it came out of the out of the workshop. I have been running the air conditioner 24 seven. So just to put that into context though, we live in the Southwest of Western Australia. It's, it's been probably maximum temperatures of about 32 degrees during the day. And we only get that for a short period of time. So the afternoons are quite warm. The mornings are quite cool. Um, as we've always talked about these particular air conditioners cycle down to virtually nothing when they're not working. So, um, overnight it's virtually doing nothing. I've got it set on night mode so it is working as efficiently as possible. But the worst we've seen the battery get down to is 42%. So since we've taken this van out of the workshop, we it's been out of the workshop for four days approximately. We've been running this air conditioner for 24-7. As I've said, it's got 1400 watts of solar. So during the day we're seeing up to 85 amps of recharge going into the battery at 12 volt, which equates to about 1200 watts of solar, a little bit more. So basically the system's been designed in a way that, you know, if they want to, they can run the air conditioner 24 seven and also use other appliances at the same time. So the system will keep up with that. You know, the, it's, it is a very large system for a caravan. Um, 1400 watts of solar and a 620 amp hour battery and a 3000 watt multi plus is, is on the higher end of, of the systems that we install. So they also will want to run coffee machines and, and toasters and kettles and, and thermomixes and all those sorts of things and they can absolutely do that. They are also talking about removing their gas cooker inside the van and installing a um, permanently mounted induction cooktop. So I've added in an extra power point underneath the sink for them to be able to add that in at a later date. So they are going to do that at some point in time in the future before they head off on their travels. So with the Victron system, we have fully integrated it through the Serbo and the Touch GX, which we've mounted the tart up against the fridge. If you turn around and have a look there, you can see we've, um, we've mounted it on the side of the fridge there, which gives them good options for um, usability, functionality. They can have a look at all of the inputs and outputs from solar. They can, you know, have a look switching their inverter on and off. It's um, the new firmware is pretty, um, pretty intuitive in terms of being able to do all the bits and pieces that you need to do from switching inverters on and off and monitoring um, what's going on. The other thing we've done with this particular van as well, so the bush trackers of this age don't actually come with any tank monitoring. And the really good thing about the Servo GX system is that you can get Bluetooth tank sensors, ultrasonic Bluetooth tank sensors added to the bottoms of these tanks and it just basically links into the system and we've given them 
the ability to monitor four tanks. So they do have a drinking water and three general water tanks. So yeah, each one of those is now independently monitored. As I say, the, the bush trackers are really well fitted out from the perspective of being able to turn tanks on and turn tanks off and all that sort of stuff. And they just don't have tank monitoring for some reason. So we've given them that. The other things we've done for them is I had a couple of electrical dramas with a couple of power points that didn't necessarily work so well or they didn't have them in the right spot so we've added those in. All right, so this van basically came from factory with a smaller battery system, a smaller inverter and a smaller amount of solar. We've completely ripped all that out and we've given them uh, a larger inverter, so 3000 watt inverter, 1400 watts of solar, a 620 amp hour battery, full tank monitoring and functionality through a touch screen so that these guys can now go away on their travels around Australia and run the air conditioner, any kitchen appliances. If they want to put an induction cooktop in here, they can do that. Really well kitted out van now. All right, we'll leave it there. See you in the next one. Let's get into how you operate this guy. So you do, because it is, it, both of you, if you're both watching. So basically, um, so when you turn your screen on, you've got all sorts of different bits of information, right? So this is your brief overview, which will give you the information in summary, I suppose is what you'd call it. So your battery 65%, tanks are 96% full, and that's an average across the four tanks. You've got nothing connected via mains, you've got no vehicle connected and you've got 872 watts of solar coming in at the moment. Over this side you're consuming 62 watts or 59 watts AC and 53 watts DC. This you can have a look at the chart displays, how much you've been putting in each day. It's like ridiculous amounts of information you can get out of it, right? So if you're into all that sort of stuff, to turn your inverter on and off, you can either do it one of two ways. You click on, so where it says inverter charger, you can either click that on, go to on or off, and you can hear that's just switched it off. Um, to turn it on, it's just the opposite. Yeah. Alternatively, you see this little toggle in the top.